Cyberwork listeners, I have important news before we dive into today's episode. I want to make sure you all know that we have a lot more than weekly interviews about cybersecurity careers to offer you. You can actually learn cybersecurity for free on our InfoSec Skills platform. If you go to infosecinstitute.com slash free and create an account, you can start learning right now. We have 10 free cybersecurity foundation courses from podcast guest Keytron Evans, six cybersecurity leadership courses from also podcast guest Cicero Chimbanda, 11 courses on digital forensics, 11 courses on incident response, seven courses on security architecture, plus courses on DevSecOps, Python for cybersecurity, JavaScript security, ICS and SCADA security fundamentals, and more. Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free and start learning today. Got it? Then let's begin today's episode. Today on CyberWork, InfoSec Skills author Mike Myers of Total Seminars joins me to discuss three foundational certifications that will start you on just about any path you want to go. I'm talking about CompTIA's A+, Network+, and Security+, certification. On the show, Mike dispenses tough love for people who want someone else to map out their careers for them. He talks up the benefit of vendor-neutral certs, and he totally blew my mind by comparing certs with car windshield wipers. If you're intrigued, you should be. That is all today on CyberWork. Welcome to this week's episode of the CyberWork with InfoSec podcast. Each week we talk with a different industry thought leader about cybersecurity trends, the way those trends affect the work of InfoSec professionals, and offer tips for breaking in or moving up the ladder in the cybersecurity industry. As you probably hopefully already know, InfoSec skills is kind of a big deal these days. Our interactive learning platform boasts 500 plus cybersecurity courses featuring cloud-hosted cyber ranges, hands-on projects, customizable certification practice exams, skills assessments, and other features. Our guest today, Mike Myers, uh, is a course creator for InfoSec skills, and he wrote the course for one of our most popular and most requested course tracks, the Security Plus certification from CompTIA. Uh, So we're going to talk about his skills course for Security Plus, as well as his Network Plus and A Plus paths, and the way that these three learning paths will provide an incredible base on which to springboard to all sorts of different cybersecurity and related careers. Uh, Mike, thank you for joining us today on CyberWork. Hello. Chris, can you hear me? I can hear you, Mike. You are coming through loud and clear. So the problem you with these Zoom meetings is that I lean very heavily on whose face is being highlighted at any okay. given moment. And uh, I wasn't being highlighted, so I thought I was going blank there for a minute. To take, okay. Take... You, you, you are groovy, so, uh... All right, <laughs> welcome, so welcome, welcome aboard. Thanks. Always good to see you, Chris. Uh, so, yeah, to start with, I want to uh, sort of talk to you about your own cybersecurity journey. You know, you've run your own education company, Total Seminars, for over 25 years now. Uh, how did you get interested? Yeah, isn't in cyber- that terrifying? I know. Good yeah, 25 God. years. What were we all doing 25 years ago? We were. Uh, <laughs> I had we were, a lot more hair. We were more mere children. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, how did you get interested in cybersecurity as an area of study? And what, what caused you to want to teach it? Well, you got to keep in mind, uh, Chris, I was doing basics of IT way before I was doing cybersecurity. I mean, sure. let's be realistic. When I when I got started in IT, depending on how you want to argue this, uh, my first computer was an S100 unit in 1979, but uh, that was back when computers were made out of steel. Yeah, uh, I know. Hit them with a hammer but, and you wouldn't do anything to it. But on, it was about maybe uh, my motivation for security, which is primarily security plus, mm-hmm. um, started, I guess, a little over 10 years ago. Uh, okay. CompTIA had started pushing Security Plus, and I've always thought of myself as the guy who gets people through the basics so that they're ready for security, right? Yes. And uh, so when CompTIA rolled out the Security Plus, they're like, you know, Mike, uh, you know, it'd be great if uh, you know, we, you know, they're always looking to get more people to write books and do videos. And, you know, that's how CompTIA works. And yes. that is a good thing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, my my main push, and this is over 10 years ago, got him, uh, was that, well, I'm not really a security guy. I'm a basics guy. Mm-hmm. And my job is to get people understanding the basics. So when we start learning about uh, DNS sec, they know enough about DNS and we don't have to handle them through that. Yeah. And uh, so that's really what developed my motivation on Security Plus. And then, I mean, you know, there's plenty of security certifications that have been out there for a while. Uh, 
CEH is one that, you know, sticks to mind. Sure. Uh, but um, there's so many certifications out there, Chris, you know, and, and yeah. so a big part of my learning process uh, coming up to speed again, this is over a decade ago, mm-hmm. was there's a lot of certifications out there. How is this Security Plus going to fit in? And I'm blessed that I got people at CompTIA who will listen to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what, do, what, do, what are they specifically uh, like? What, what are they giving you that other places uh, have not in terms of, uh, you know, oh, they input give me, or freedom? They give, give me nothing. Uh, yeah. It's what they take from me, Chris. Okay. Uh, I, I'm fearless and yell constantly. So, uh, <laughs> <You don't say. laughs> uh, so it, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much a one way street. I, 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 I want to stress very upfront right now. I don't get any special information. No, no. Everybody yeah. else gets. I'm, I'm talking least, about in, in terms of general freedom to do what you want. You sound like you were very sort of enthused about CompTIA in that regard. So like, what is it about them specifically that you... Uh, well, they're, they're vendor neutral. They're vendor yeah. neutral. Okay, sure. And sure. it just kills me to start teaching people about security from a Cisco point of view or start talking about yeah. security from a Microsoft point of view. Yep. Or, yep. You know, and, and you get a bias. Mm-hmm. And that's the nature of the beast. Um, sure. You know, uh, Microsoft does an amazing job with DNS servers, but I would never use that as the primary way to learn about DNS. Uh, mm-hmm. All all DNS forward lookup zones are Active Directory uh, integrated. Well, that might be a little bit more than most people want to pick up on their first swipe through DNS, right? Yes. Uh, you know, Cisco, Cisco and VLANs alone with Cisco, I find irritating. Um, <laughs> okay. But it, Cisco does a great job, but uh, yeah. you have to learn the Cisco way. And I tell everybody, if you're going to be into networking, you will become a Cisco person. That's yes. just going to happen. Yeah. So I think that that's worth noting is that, you know, it's it, from your perspective, it's it's best to start vendor neutral, learn the foundations that will apply everywhere. And then the sort of specialization comes when you either go into Microsoft, you go into Cisco and you already or, have or, the or, basic knowledge. Or ISC you find squared out the, or yeah. ISACA. Yeah. Or, sure, sure. you know, uh, uh, GIAC, however you want to look at that, those yeah. different uh, paths. Totally. Uh, so, I mean, that was a big part of it for me, uh, you know, was realizing that Security Plus is just, if all knowledge that is IT security is a perfectly round six-foot coffee table, okay? Yeah. Then stick your fingers into some pepper and grab just a little bit of pepper and then throw it on top of that table. And those little spots where it lands, that's security plus. Right. Right. I mean, security plus touches security plus touches governance. Security plus touches audit. Security plus touches forensics. I mean, I can keep going incident response business, uh, you know, which are really important things. In fact, and here's the one critique I'm going to make. Okay. The current Security Plus is, in my opinion, too technical because, Hmm. well, because I think the one thing that CompTIA did really well with Security Plus is really made it almost like a survey of IT security. And I think it gives, uh, especially people who are trying to punch into the wonderful world of IT security, some sense of the scope of what's going on out there. Yes, And I feel that CompTIA made it more technical, almost made it more like a pre-CASP is my opinion on that. Still a great cert. And and trust me, Chris, if there's one thing I know that InfoSec counts on me to tell y'all is that if something isn't good, I'm going to be the first one to stand up and say it. Yeah. And uh, I think Security Plus... The most eye-opening certification you can get from CompTIA is Network Plus because Hmm. most well, most of us know, or at least think we know what an IP address is or what DHCP is, or we've all punched in a 192.168 address, and you know, uh, we've set up our home routers. And uh, oh boy, that would get me. I got a whole other topic area we ought to cover sometime, Chris, (laughs) which is called the assumed knowledge of the entry-level earner. Okay. Yeah, you know, but let's not do that right now. Okay. <laughs> when you're writing training materials, Stay on target. <laughs> what, it, it's impossible. Come on, Chris. You okay. fool, you invited me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, where, where was I? Oh, yeah. So um, Network Plus is probably the biggest bang for buck, the Eureka moments. Yes. Uh, but Security Plus is a very, very close second. And like for years, I always told people Security Plus is not going to get you a job. That is not true. I do not like to push the 
get a cert and get a job thing. It sounds like 1990 all over again. Right. Uh, but um, in this case, it's it's pretty true. I mean, if if, if you are you know possess some degree of bilateral symmetry and can speak, <laughs> you can. It, it, it's not that hard to get a job in IT security right now. Now, granted, it's not a very exciting job. Right. And you don't mind, you know, working for a, you know, an MSP running the midnight till eight shift, watching 400 customers in case a, mm-hmm. um, you know, intrusion c- kicks in. Right. But yeah, the money's gonna, not you're bad. You're going to be cannon fodder for a little while there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that that is the one place where uh, we really do see uh, a lot of interest and, and that yes. security plus and, and security plus. Will, in my opinion, I don't want to say any cert will get you a job, right. um, but I will say that, well, well, here, I tell people there's only reason to get any form of certification, and you're getting a certification for your next job. That's what you're yes. doing. Right. You're putting a, a badge on your chest so that employers and, and customers and whatever it might be can look at you and say, okay, that Mike Myers, he's got, you know, X, okay? Mm-hmm. Um yeah, my mind is in a million places today, Chris. I apologize. Um, That's all right. Uh, one more time. Where was I at? You got so uh, yeah. in my in my classes, Chris. Mm-hmm. I literally tell my students, I go, look, I might get on a roll from time to time, and then I'll suddenly stop, and I'll say to you guys, "What was the last thing I said?" And the entire <laughs> class is like, "Why are laughing?" But it works. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not capable of uh, original creative thought, Chris. I uh, stand on the shoulders of giants. Sure. And uh, I steal with attribution. There you go. Uh, Love it. Which is kind of like I ask for That's... forgiveness, not permission. Okay. Uh, <laughs> unless it's graphics for my book and then poor McGraw Hill makes me sign everything 18 oh, yeah. times. Yeah. 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 I worked in, I worked in, in, in uh, image clearance. So I know all about that, but uh, um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that, that moves perfectly into my, into my next question. I mean, you said it yourself, but uh, you know, we say on the show all the time that certification study should be a tool that furthers a specific plan for your career. So, you know, don't buy a tool without knowing what you're going to plan to build with it. So on the other hand, I think it would be hard to deny that a person studying a plus network plus and security plus, us would have such a thorough grasp of every aspect of the fundamentals of security and networking that it would allow them to move in a, a lot of different directions in their career. So do you think that uh, being conversant in all of these different types of basics is going to help novice cybersecurity pros in their career? It's not going to help. It's required. You have yeah. to have it. Yeah, You have to have it. Uh, you know, people are like, oh, uh, I could teach you how to become a security analyst in three weeks. It's like, well, mm-hmm. You know, that's not going to happen. Not realistic. <laughs> okay. Uh, but there are courses out there uh, mm-hmm. that uh, maybe not in three weeks, but uh, in a matter of a few months. Uh, it's just that demand is so high. Yes. Uh, I can't, you know, a lot of people want to give these uh, like boot camp terms. These are not boot camps. It's a whole other genre yep. of uh, education that we're starting to see pop up. Um, and uh these folks tend to do really, really, really good work, uh, and I'm 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 pleased with what the, with how they do. There's a number of them out there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I want to uh, start at the very very rudiments of this because you know if we want to uh, not assume that people already sort of know what these certifications are. You know, we've had enough people who tell us that they come to these these videos with zero, you know, tech or, or security or networking knowledge. So can you sort of tell me what each of the three learning paths we mentioned, A+, Network+, plus, Security+, plus, brings to the table for students who want to start their career journey? Like, what are you what are you going to learn with an A+, plus? what are you going to learn with a Net+, sure, what are you going to learn with a Tech+, plus? yeah. So uh, before I say, answer that, Chris, I want to make sure people understand in the, in, in the world of IT, Certifications are kind of our way of letting other people know what we know. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, rarely are certifications absolutely straight up required. Well, I'm not going to say rarely. Yeah. The minority uh, where they say you absolutely must have a, you know, A plus cert. You know, I'll see some stuff like much higher certifications, uh, folks. There's yeah. over 1,100 certifications out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I, there's no way I can name them all. There is no legal order by which you take them. There is no decide. You just, you, there's no law. Any path anything. you make is going to be a path of your own making. Right. So that's a that's a, a big thing that I try to do. So uh, please remember the word path when I'm done talking about security plus, Chris. Here, sure. 
So anyway, so the idea is you want to get in IT. Well, good for you. Let's get you on some basic certs that understand the basics. I really do like CompTIA. CompTIA being vendor neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a nonprofit. Uh, you know, it, it, they keep their nose to the grindstone and trying to determine what does the industry actually need in terms of skill set. CompTIA right. works very hard at that. Uh, I'm not saying that private areas don't. I just know that CompTIA does. Yeah, it's a good, good place to start. So CompTIA has a, a number of certificates, probably north of 30 certifications over the years. But what I call their big three is the CompTIA A+, the CompTIA Network+, and the CompTIA Security+. Plus. The CompTIA A+, Plus is you have to prove that you have the skills of somebody with about six months experience who's been working on systems. So you can uh, break open a desktop system and replace a power supply. Uh, mm -hmm. You can go over to a laptop and reconfigure the wireless. Uh, you can reset a phone to factory. These are pretty basic skills, yep. but uh, the CompTIA A plus covers those. Yeah, and uh, it's worth noting, a lot of people know how to do that stuff, but they know how to do it because they, they've been like huffing and puffing and swearing through like tutorials and they can do a little bit, but this is, here's here's your systematized like, this is well, exactly yeah, well, that's how, to do it, how to do it. Yeah. Because they don't understand what's running underneath it. Yes, they, exactly. They do, yeah. they do the, what I call, if you see the light, press the blue button. Yeah, right, right. And uh, that's not, that's fine for people yeah. with one time. Yeah, problems, I mentioned, I mentioned that only because I think that people look at the what A plus covers and they think, oh, I don't need that. I already know how to do that stuff. But I think there is a there is a lot of benefit to having it sort of foundational and knowing the theory behind it, because there's so much, you know, security of, of like, you know, people who don't advance in their careers know how to push the button, but they don't, like you said, they don't know what 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 happens behind the scenes. Or and worse support. than that, they're they're what I call Swiss cheesers. Okay, yeah, a lot yeah. of cheese, a lot, a lot of holes. holes. A lot of yeah, holes. so uh, <laughs> so we're working that. But so if somebody knows all this, then great. Then mm -hmm. then look, in order to pass any certification, not even any IT certification, you're going to need three things. You're going to need instruction. Now, that could be a classroom instructor. That could be a great video, but you're going to need some kind of instruction. Second, you're going to need reference. So that usually manifests as a book. A lot of people say, I don't need a book. I say you need a book. And I've been doing this longer than you, so get a book. Get a book. And, th and then the, the third one is practice questions. You have to have some form of practice questions. And the better the practice questions are towards emulating the actual test you're going to be sitting on taking. That's how you get a certification, folks. You sit down at a computer and you take a test, all right? Yep. And then, uh, so uh, th those are the three pieces you absolutely have to have in order to uh, uh, pass anything like that. Uh, so the, 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 the trick comes back to is you know, let's just go through the different certs. So the yep. second one is going to be Network Plus. And with Network mm -hmm. Plus, uh, Network Plus covers uh, creating a local area network mm -hmm. and then connecting it to larger local area networks. Okay. With an A Plus, you take a system and connect it to a local area network. Right. That's what you learn. But with yep. Network Plus, you're building your own local area network and connecting it however you might want to do it. So the network plus really gets its first time people really start talking about, you know, uh, PDUs, IP packets versus Ethernet frames versus TCP IP datagrams, yep. all that kind of stuff. Um, but those are the core pieces of networking that people will need later down the road. Uh, and the best example of that is the third of these, which is going to be security plus uh, security plus is literally all over the place in IT security. There could be one, like if you want to use my book as an example, I got one chapter on forensics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got another chapter on, uh, uh, it's been a while, it's not been that long, I'm going, I should have had a book in front of me. What, do I, what other chapters? Uh, cryptography, there you yeah. go. Yeah. And, uh, these two topics have nothing to do with each other, not really, but that's what the Security Plus is all about. And, and I, I got to tell you, the biggest sales pitch I have for Security Plus is that when you come out the other end of the Security Plus, you have a real grasp of what the IT security industry is. Like that's one of the things. So, Chris, when I write any kind of trade material, there's four reasons to put something in there. Number one is going to make them a better tech. Mm -hmm. Number two, is it going to help them pass a certification or a license or whatever it is? Number three is because it's cool. 
because sometimes mm-hmm. you got to put things in it because it's cool. And number four is if I don't teach you, the question is burning in your mind and you'll be angry. Yeah. Well, I give a great example of that. You ready? Okay, please. Uh, AES uh, uh, cryptography, since we said cryptography earlier. Are, are you really curious to know how AES works to encrypt 64 slash 128 bits of data? Are you talking to me? <laughs> yes, I'm going to talk to you in this particular situation, okay. Chris. Because, well, because people, they want to know. I'm, I'm theoretically fascinated. Yes, please. <laughs> So I've got, in fact, probably one of my most favorite videos in my Security Plus is I've got this thing says, okay, you want to watch? Here you go. And it just goes through, there's a curse and I, just uh, goes through the chart table, and by, so it's like two minutes of it. It's very accurate. Mm-hmm. But after about 90 seconds, you're like, and okay. Mm-hmm. Well, as a technician, the thing that's very important, and, and IT security, they're all technicians as far as I'm concerned. When you're when you need to learn something, there's a certain point where the knowledge goes to what I call the black box. Okay, and and, and that is, I can go deeper than this, but it's not going to meet any of the four criteria. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, another great example is uh, uh, RAM uh, c- CPU caching, mm-hmm. level one, level two, level three caches. Chris, I can talk to you about three-way versus four-way set associative caching all day long. But unfortunately, the only people who are going to enjoy it is me and you and maybe six other folks, right? Yeah, yeah. It does not meet the four criteria. So right. uh, th- that's the thing I have to be very, very careful about when I do that. And that's the thing. Well, I'll finally get there. And that's the thing that um, I think CompTIA does a pretty good job of that. Security Plus is a very tricky certification to administer because- mm-hmm. How do you, as this new person who wants to get into IT security, where's a launching point? Where where is a good step off? Right. And I can't imagine anybody who ever wants to get, I don't care if you have a doctorate in IT security. I think there's a strong, is there such thing as a doctorate? Probably somewhere. I think so. Yeah. 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 I think we might've interviewed one here. (laughs) The The CompTIA Security Plus, the survey of IT security, as I call it, is unmatched out there in terms of providing users with the basic understanding of what is IT security. So if somebody like Chris, you're like, well, tell me what's on the test. I'm like, no, I'm not going to. Okay. There's there's <laughs> objective lists out there that you can read that. Yeah. But I'm telling you something far more important. Mm-hmm. What I'm telling you is that uh, the CompTIA Security Plus will give you the knowledge to be able to understand where you want to go in IT security. There yeah. is no other tool that does that. Not yeah. that I'm aware of. It doesn't, yeah. even, if you think about it, Chris, it wouldn't even have to be a certification. Nobody's out there. Uh, so the, the problem we run into here, Chris, is, uh, so I got, Chris, you want, you want to get rich? Like crazy rich? <laughs> yes. Okay, so I got this idea, all right? And the idea is, like, I've got this little townhouse in uh, Houston. And Houston's a hot place, right? Mm-hmm. So, and and it, and the waters come sometimes. So it's uh, mm-hmm. we basically live in a swamp. Yep. And uh, so I wanted to come up with all this energy efficiency stuff, right? So I was like, okay, I want some energy efficiency. What am I going to do? Oh, I've heard of solar powered hot water heaters. So I call up the solar powered hot water heaters. They're like, oh yeah, you can save so much money. I'm like, well what if I just got a more efficient hot water heater? Like, oh, we don't know anything about that. I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, wait. Then I'd like call the Windows guy and go, can we get more efficient? Oh my God, yeah, we can manage that. I'm like, well, what if I just put shades in front of the wow, We don't know anything about that. Yeah. And, and that's the problem we have. So if you want to make a lot of money, you ready, Chris? Mm-hmm. Come up with somebody that regular human beings can call who will come to your house, survey your house and go, here are the 40 different completely unrelated things that you could do to make your house more energy efficient. You know what the number one is, by the way, Chris? Hmm. Weather stripping. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. No, no. I, most houses, you are, in terms you are of bang so, for the buck. As, but, as someone who's owned this house for three years, you are so talking my language right now. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm well, dying then, for that guy, <laughs> that person. <laughs> so that's what Security Plus does. Mm-hmm. Security Plus provides 
that one stop place where you can look at all these different aspects of ID yep. security. Yep. The problem is that so many people come to ICD security thinking they're going to be pen testers. Mm, okay. Which is kind of interesting, but it's also a kind of job where you live in your uh, live in a suitcase. It's yep. the kind of job where you have no social life. Yep. Uh, it's the kind of job that uh, tends to be uh, very high pressure. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, have you guys ever considered audit? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, oh, oh, go ahead. But well, I, I, I'll, I'll just, let me just finish with that. And that is that's Please. what that's what Security Plus does. Yeah. People don't even know that audit exists as a separate thing right, until right. they take the Security Plus. So the big challenge I have with people is after they take Security Plus, then what the heck are they going to do next, right? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I still don't have a formalized thing on that. Maybe InfoSec could help me whip up a, so you got your Security Plus. Now what? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, all, the, and, all the paths leading from the one spot there. Well, because it's important because if yeah. you start marching up one person's path, the other person isn't going to like you. Uh, yeah. Certified bodies do not have any cross certification. Sure. They do not speak to each other in yep. the restaurants. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so you can find yourself as a relatively newly minted IT security person and find yourself maybe going up a path that you didn't think you wanted because you thought pen testing is all there was, yes. for example. Well, th- that, that can be wildly expensive, Chris, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I know InfoSec provides uh, training at, at very reasonable prices, but as you can imagine, as you get higher up and higher up into that, your market gets more vertical, and mm-hmm. you know, so there are yeah. certifications there towards the top where many, 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 many thousands of dollars are yep. de rigueur to be spent, and yeah. and what a terrible thing to have that mistake. That's where Security yeah. Plus can help. Well, yeah, that's and that, that's a that's a great place to to jump to next because uh, again, I, I'm always you know because I'm not very tech focused myself personally, and I'm always sort of thinking uh, for people like me, and you know, I think within the cybersecurity space, especially on you know forums on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, people you get a lot of that inside baseball talk, and I think it puts uh, potential you know beginners off because they feel like well if I haven't been doing this since I was five if I've, if I'm not a computer science prodigy if I haven't done this that or the other thing there's nothing out there for me and and like you said there's there's pen testing but there's also uh, risk assessment there's also threat modeling there's also uh, you know all these sort of non technical but incredibly important things there's like you said there's analysts there's there's stuff you can do in your sleep there's stuff you can learn in three weeks. Change um, management teams. Change I mean, management. this goes on and on. Yeah, uh, DevSecOps. Yeah, any direction you want to go. And so, yeah, that's that. Okay, so I, I want to move from that to um, I, I, this is probably an obvious question, but do you recommend, you know, because we, we we talk about them in the three order of like, you know, micro, macro, macro of like A plus, secure the, you know, create the system, net plus, create the network, security plus, secure the system. Do you think that 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 is a interact, you know, like you have to see, you know, do them in that order or or does it does it vary depending on where you think you want your career to go? A plus is kind of the uh, the wild one there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of people who are going into IT security may not even need an A plus, to be honest with you. I yeah. think it... I think they'll need it some, but you can get around it. Uh, Network Plus, the mo- I, I call Network Plus the most important certificate you'll never need. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you don't see a lot of call for people. I need Network Plus certified, but I would be hard pressed to imagine someone taking Security Plus training without having the equivalent Network Plus knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like learning Latin as a scientist or something. It's like you you're not you don't use it, but you you're gonna need it. But, well, even even Cisco, like Cisco yeah. uh, with their CCNA, ICND one was uh, traditionally they had that. What did Cisco have that internetworking? Mm-hmm. What was that? The little pre CCNA thing. Oh, they yeah. may still have it. That's brand new, isn't it? Uh, the whole thing. Okay, it comes out with brand new iterations constantly. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I, I have not looked into this in over a year, so I don't want to start naming things and find myself either <laughs> wrong or dated. Right. Uh, all I'm trying to say is that even Cisco had preliminary courses. But to me, like Network Plus is almost a CCNA. Yes. Uh, if you can pass Network Plus and then take, you know, give yourself 
twenty percent more time to learn the Cisco way to do it. The specifics, yes. Yeah. iOS. Yeah. I think you could easily get both of those certifications in the same shot. Yeah. All right. Well, so th this is this is great. This this sets a, a really nice table for. Um, having us talk about let's let's sort of like structure this around the absolute beginner's guide to putting your first feet on the path here so let's you know let's let's talk about um you know the people who aren't who weren't born into computer science who haven't been hacking mainframes since they were five who are interested in this field and know that there's a lot of jobs to be had and want to get in on it but are a little intimidated by the tech so like what 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 do you recommend to sort of like uh, put them on the path with your, you know, like wh where should they go? They get their skills subscription and they go to Mike Meyer's skill path. Like wh what, what classes within there do you think will like get them excited? We'll, we'll start to sort of make the synapses pop a little bit and go, okay, I see how this connects with this and so forth. Do you have any sort of like uh, <laughs> customized recipe where you're like, okay, try a little bit of network plus and then jump over to security and you can see what's going on here. And no, no. Okay. No, but no, don't, don't. It's a wonderful question, Chris. I'm just going to grab your question by the hair and punch it a couple of times, if you don't mind. Sure. The first thing, if, if I met somebody like that, and I meet many every week on my AMA, uh, the first thing I want to make sure that they have is passion. Yeah. Uh, if you're just looking to make money, seriously, you just want to make money right now, get into either plumbing or electricians. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, you said you own your own home, right? Yep. Have you have you paid an electrician lately? Uh, nope, not since we moved in, but yes. Got, well, here, knock on wood. I have a bad habit of buying old houses that need love. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're getting into IT because you have a passion towards IT. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you have some amount of passion towards IT, you're already doing IT things. Now, when I say IT things, Chris, I'm not talking about you've taken up Java programming for fun. That's not what I mean. Yeah. What I mean is you have found yourself, we all have devices that we're typing on and they all fail from time to time. Do you find, here's the big question, do you find yourself on the initial attempt trying to fix it yourself? Yep. Or do you instantly hand it to somebody and then cross your arms and wait? <laughs> yes. To me, that is a very clear criteria to define who might be successful and who might not. Now, there's a lot of other things, too. Are you into fine work? Uh, people who do needlepoint or, uh, mm -hmm. uh, or crochet tend to be pretty good nerds especially yeah well you don't have to be nerddom exists everywhere chris it's oh, not yeah. just in it uh i have uh when i was a little kid we used to have a quilting party this is back in the 70s okay mm -hmm. and the ladies would quilt in the basement of this church oh, yeah. making a quilt and as a little boy i was little enough to get under the quilt and tighten it and i would get free I would get free uh, uh, Tootsie Rolls. Mm -hmm. And the ladies really talked about the different ways of tightening this quilting table and what it meant. And, 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 and these are women in their 70s who are just about ready to start swinging at each other uh, because they're nerding out yeah. on this technology. So anybody who does something like that on a separate thing, they're sports nerds. Oh, yeah. often show that they can have a, what's the word I'm looking for? Hell, yeah, I write books for a living. Yeah, I'm a wordsmith. Uh, <laughs> they have a thing. They have a good aptitude. There we go. Aptitude. I just there aptitude, you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, towards, or towards IT. So those would be some of the things I look about. Nobody gets up in the morning and says, you know, I don't like where I'm at. I'm 24 years old. Da, 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 da. I'm going to go in IT. Mm -hmm. They or they they say it a lot, or someone says something to them, okay, yeah. and and gets them there. Look, there, everybody wants a formula, Chris, and there isn't one, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you talk about learning. Here, when people are like, "Well, Mike, tell me how to do it." Oh, great, Booba! I'm like, yeah. get an A plus book, get my A plus videos, uh, uh, go to InfoSec, get some practice questions, and just get A plus knocked out. Yeah, the reason I do that is because. 
I need people to do their own searching. There is something very important about diagnostics and IT. Oh, yeah. If you don't have a self-motivational aspect to it, you tend not to be successful. We always talk about, oh, this guy's such a great IT uh, IT repair person, or this gal's such a great auto mechanic. It's like, why? Well, the, the reason is, Chris, and, and uh, I think I've said this to you before. I'm going to say it again. So, Chris, uh, I own a Ford F-250 Lariat, okay? okay. Mm-hmm. Chris, I have a question for you. Sir, could you get into my Ford F-250 and run the windshield wipers? I could, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. I could, I could figure it out, I bet. But what? If I got... are, are you Ford certified? <laughs> do, you, do, right. you have it? do you have a, did you take a course on windshield wiper manipulation? No. Yeah. Why could you run the windshield wipers on my Ford F-250, Chris? Go. Yeah, the windshield wipers uh, work similarly in, in, in most cars and with a, a, a minute or two of uh, trial and error, I think it would be easy enough to, to figure out if it doesn't go this way, it goes that way. If it doesn't go that way, it goes this way. And, and You're willing to poke around. That mm-hmm. already makes you potentially a great nerd, Chris. Just oh, that. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? You don't uh, need to when, tell me. <laughs> when, when people just, hear, they, oh, my car isn't working right, and they walk away. Yep. You know, oh, I don't know how to make bread right. They just walk away. Mm-hmm. So, so if, if you're asking me what what is it, this is really what I'm twisting your question to my own evil needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is where, what are the attributes that I'm going to be looking for on somebody who's coming out of the blocks mm-hmm. uh, that, that they're going to have to show to me? Yeah. And the ability to poke around for problems to look towards to find your own resolution before running towards help is, in my opinion, one of the strongest attributes they can do. From there, in terms of, okay, now to try to answer your question the way you formed it originally, so mm-hmm. what do I do? Mike, okay, fine, they got that everything. What do I do? Do, like I said, you know, buy some good A-plus training and yep. uh, and go take A-plus. Yeah. The reason I tell them to take A-plus is A-plus is relatively easy, in my opinion. It's wide, but not deep. And uh, it it proves to me that these people have some stick to it in this. I mean, it's the same thing yeah. with a four year college degree. Yeah, uh, people are always like, "Do I need a four year degree?" I'm like, "Yes, you should mm-hmm. get a four year degree." Well, I don't want your I- okay. You should have started with that instead of saying, "Do I need one?" Okay, right. now we understand that you don't have the time and or the money or proclivity to go for a four year degree. Fine, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. go look at a double A degree, look at a tech school. Mm-hmm. You know, even those schools, I'm, I'm pretty sure, Chris, you guys get tech schools who are customers of yours, right? It's true. Yeah, and, and more than one. It, it, they like good training materials, man. They're gonna they're gonna come to you guys every time. Absolutely. Uh, so so it, it, I, I keep I go on and on. So it gets them pointed in the right direction mm-hmm. by getting one certification. This industry is too easy to get into right now. In fact, it's too easy, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. This uh, is... Because what's going to happen is the same thing happened back in 1990 with the, do you remember, are you old enough to remember CNEs, Chris? Certified uh, Novell Engineers? I, I remember the names. I remember those words. I wasn't in tech at the time, but yes. You didn't, you didn't, <laughs> you, 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 it was, it was a beautiful time. It was, I was, time. I was a hand off my computer to other people at that point. At that point. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Uh, but uh, the, that's what's taking place. The demand has reached a point where uh, HR departments and d- department heads and technical interviews are literally lowering the bar. Yeah. And uh, that is very, very good for intense, motivated, ambitious, passionate people who may not necessarily have what was previously very, very high. Yep. barriers to entrance yeah uh it's bad because we will find a certain percentage of uh what we call paper cert- certificates back mm-hmm. then that yes. are going to yep. pop through and yep. unfortunately chris there's nothing you or i can do about that mm-hmm. all right uh you guys turned to my security plus product because it it helps people successfully get through that program right mm-hmm. well you know, there's a lot of people out there who are just really good at taking tests. Yeah. And when I and, was like, a, and that, that's their skill set. That's the thing they like doing. I had a guy who was a senior yeah. in high school. He was our uh, 
It's a tight end on the football team, varsity football team. That boy was about as sharp as a sack of wet mice. <laughs> and uh, he uh, he got a 1600 on the SAT. Mm-hmm. And he's just, he's showing everybody, he goes, guys, I guessed. And I was like, <laughs> dude, you need to go to Atlantic City like right now because uh, <laughs> yeah. that kind of stuff. Something else uh, is happening there, yeah. So, so that's 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 really the state of where things are at right now. Uh, the other thing in terms of training is that everybody's different in training. If you have your three big pieces, your good instruction, your uh, a book or some form of reference, mm-hmm. and uh, practice questions. You have the tools you need. The problem is, is everybody's good with different tools in different ways. So there's people who are visual learners tend to do really well uh, watching videos or an instructor led training. Uh, There are people who read. uh, They're going to be obviously reading books. There are kinesthetics who need a screwdriver in their hand while they're doing stuff. Everybody's different. And I'm not going to tell people how to do it. What I will tell people, like, for example, uh, for A plus, you need on on average, you need 220 study hours. Okay. So how do you get those study hours? That's up to you. You know, people are like, well, that means I can only study one hour a week. Then I go, fine, you're going to take the uh, exam in four years. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so you know, uh, in, in the front of my books, I try to give you some kind of template to help you guesstimate how much time it's going to take. Because the other thing I tell everybody to do is put your money down and sign up for that certificate. Mm-hmm. Heat and pressure makes diamonds, man. And I'll tell you, yeah. nothing works better to keep you from watching, you know, leave it to beaver reruns on YouTube and get back on the book more than knowing that in three and a half weeks, I'm sitting down to take the A plus 220, you know, 1101. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are some pieces that I, I do, Chris, that uh, yeah. try to motivate people. But there is no perfect single path. Sure. I, I can't, I can't. I don't know what your study habits are. I don't know what your memory retention is. I don't know what, you know, out, outside influences are distracting you. Yeah. Well, I, I want to jump back to something you said before about how it's almost too easy to get in right now and we're getting these sort of uh, paper candidates and so forth. Do you think that there's this is a bubble that's going to burst? Like, where do you see this? Because, I, you know, I think it's unavoidable that there's there's such a demand right now that they're, like you said, they're grabbing people almost off the streets uh, to do these jobs. And we're keep constantly saying like, there's so many jobs, there's so many jobs, you know, and it's benefit for people who maybe aren't in like geographic hotspots for tech, you know, you have other options and so forth. But at the same time, like you said, you're getting this sort of diluting of the, uh, of the pool of, of passionate people. Do you, uh, can you use your sort of crystal ball to see like where this, where this all goes? Yeah. I mean, uh, like 30 years ago, what will happen is that over the course of, you know, five or six years, uh, we'll start to get a more steady state. Uh, Mm -hmm. Wages will go up or whatever it will take to get more and more people coming in. And I don't like to use the word bubble. It's just high demand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the demand bar uh, until that gets filled with enough people is going to be there. So, um, what will happen eventually is that demand will slow down. It won't die. You're always going to need baby tax. That's never going to change. Yep. Uh, and uh, the people who were okay, it, the people who are okay when things are tight are going to do just fine when things are easy. So that makes yeah. that make sense to you? Yeah, totally. And uh, so I don't have any big panic about that. Um, I, you know, we ran into this. We ran into this. 20 years ago with COBOL programmers that suddenly mm-hmm. a bunch of people, I, I think I inhaled some sneezing powder or something, Chris, sorry. <laughs> sure. uh, we, we Suddenly we're out of COBOL programmers. People needed mm-hmm. COBOL. Uh, yep. We saw this 20 years ago during Y2K. Oh, uh, yeah. So it, I don't like to say the word bubble because it's not a bubble. Bubbles are right. artificial. Yes. These are real. Okay. okay. They're, 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 does that make distinct, any difference? That's a good distinction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did I answer yeah. your question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, I guess we should start uh, sort of uh, moving towards uh, wrapping up things. But again, I, I guess uh, before I do, I kind of want to reiterate and see if you have any final thoughts on it. But, um, you know, again, because I'm trying to sort of speak 
the questions that we get all the time. We do, you know, live episodes of this and people get live questions. And so when I ask things like that, like, where do I start? What do I move from here? These are the questions that I get all the time from people. How do I start? Okay. You know, and it's, and I think there's that, that absolute sort of, uh, crippling fear of going not from zero to 60, but even from zero to one, you know, like where, where is that starting point and so forth. And so well, I, I'll say one that's thing a really, really good point is that I think the way to sort of break through that inertia is to just sort of start. And then once you start feeling those muscles moving of like the A plus certification, Oh, now this does this, that's interesting. What can I do with that? And if you're naturally interested then something you learn, even in something simple like the A plus is going to say, Oh, I would like to sort of go deeper into that. And the next thing you know, you're on your net plus and you're on your sec plus and you're seeing the different little sort of twinkly bits that, uh, that sort of like capture your attention. So it's, it, I, I think it's not so much a matter of, uh, you know, here, tell me what to do next, but it's like, just start and then sort of feel out, you know, I, I know you kind of already said this, but I just kind of wanted to re reiterate it in a, in a good kind of wrap up sort of thing. Yeah, no, it's, it, 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 it's a, it's a great way to go. The, the, uh, when people say, where do I start? Remember, Chris, tell them to start by asking, start by answering this question. Do you have a passion for this? Why are you here? Mm -hmm. You know, like I got to tell you right now, Chris, I love IT. I love IT. Mm -hmm. But I have another secret passion. You want to hear about it? Please. I love fine jewelry. Mm -hmm. I love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. And um, and I'm pretty good at it. I, I I I carry a loop with me. How crazy is that, right? I love it. And yeah, uh, I love to hear it. Uh, and the thing is, though, is it's because you have passion for it. See, it's the thing when people say, "Oh, do what you love," and all this stuff. I I say, how could you not do what you love? Yeah. Um, I I I I love it. As soon as you and I stop talking, what am I going to be doing today? Oh, I got to. I'm trying to come up with a virtual um, router that can handle routing protocols yep. like, you know, BGP and stuff. It's harder than you think. Um, but anyway, um, it's, it's to have that passion. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't be afraid to throw that word at them a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. just, I have, I luckily I can make money at it because you, you know That's... how to make a, you know how to make a small fortune and find jewelry. I start with a large fortune. There you go. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh That's yeah, my, 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 all of my passions uh, make no money. I write about avant-garde music, and I've never made a cent off it. But I've been doing it for thirty years now, and uh, you know, you got to find some other passions that can also uh, pay the pay the checks. Pay well, the you should work with more than one band called avant-garde, man. <laughs> hey. yeah, <laughs> but no yeah I, I love hearing and that's the thing is I, I love hearing that oh yeah also also jewelry but jewelry doesn't uh doesn't put food on the table necessarily it's 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 a beauty in life but but it is also uh you know a beauty in life and also uh keeps the the, the, the roof over the head no, you can make plenty of money in jewelry as long as you can dig it out of the ground yourself. That's the trick. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a lot of other steps, and that's also a, explains that big hole in my backyard. Okay. <laughs> that was working out for you. It sounds like. And so, Houston, Texas, you got on four feet, you hit water. Yeah. People think uh, I'm putting in a pool. So okay, so you've 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 pretty much already answered a lot of my questions regarding uh, you know sort of self directed training. Do you have any, any final thoughts on sort of using? Like the skills platform, you know, you said uh, obviously set yourself um, personal deadlines and 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 so forth. But um, and remember, you have to be an adult. Looking, yeah. preparing, training to get a job is exactly the same as getting a job. Get disciplined. Get serious. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Hit your goals. Hit your time frames, and you'll live happily ever after. Too many yeah. people like, oh, I kind of get halfway into this training and, and then I this happens yeah. and Corona and da, 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 and, yep. you know, and uh, I, 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 you, you've got, you got to fight there. It, it's an easy world right now, but that doesn't mean you still don't have, you know, just because the barrier is lowered, that doesn't mean there isn't a substantial and good barrier because we don't want people who don't have the skills and right. the proclivities, and in my opinion, the passions to do these kinds of jobs. 
Great. So um, as we wrap up today, uh, can can you tell me a little bit about what's next on the horizon for for Mike Myers, either with InfoSec Skills or or Total Seminars or your other endeavors? There's some very exciting things coming, but unfortunately, I'm so signed up with non-disclosures, uh -huh. I can't share anything. Uh, these can you are... pantomime them? <laughs> no, but I can, like, I'm walking into the wind. Okay. Marcel, Marcel. <laughs> sure. Uh, what is, what's happening out there? Uh, I think that we're about to run into a big world of uh, smart device security that has yeah. been... Uh, the problem is, is you're, we're never sure who the bad guy is. And, uh, you know, Google is not a bad guy. Google is just big and they make sexy products that suck you in and they make good products where if you sign those little, every time when you install something and you look at those fine print, it scares you to death. Yep. And uh, I think that uh, smart device security is going to be a big, big issue uh, because, you know, I can make the ultimate smart device and all I have to do is install Facebook Messenger and it's as though I've done no work, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think there'll be an application rating system that'll pop up in the not too distant future where they literally decide the quality of an app. One of the things, criteria is going to be security. Mm-hmm. And, and keep in mind, when I say security, I'm not talking about some evil person with a wax mustache. I'm talking about, you know, what exactly is the telemetry that's being pulled? And, and uh, you know, uh, I, I think that's going to be a big issue. So th that's my best guess, Chris. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Total Seminars? Uh, give a little plug. Uh, tell what, what else you do with them. Sure, with Total Seminars, we've been around. Uh, we uh, incorporated on the April Fool's Day, 1995, which I thought was yesterday, but I guess it was longer than that. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah celebrated our 25th, yeah, man, and a few more than that. Uh, Total Seminars, we're a bunch of nerds who sit around all day and play with technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we make videos and we write books and generate practice questions. And we're lucky enough to run into you guys, Chris, and you like our stuff enough and, and yeah. to be part of your family is always uh, uh, very, very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's pretty much what we do. All right. So uh, one last big question for all the marbles. If our listeners want to learn more about Mike Myers and Total Seminars, uh, where can they go online? Well, probably the best place I'd recommend people to go to is uh, so I do an AMA on YouTube. Okay. And it's a great place. It, it was originally designed as a way for people to continue to study for coronavirus. Mm. And uh, it's kind of got its own life now. And uh, uh, anyway, it's on YouTube. It's at the Total Seminars channel. That's one word, Total Seminars channel. Look okay. that up. It's two o'clock Central Standard Time, Monday and Wednesdays. And on Fridays, we talk about raspberry pies with my friend Dave Rush. Ooh, well, people, raspberry pies are cheap. Why buy a $2,000 yeah. computer? When a thirty-five dollar computer can do the same yeah. thing, yeah, totally. And, uh, so that that's uh, those are all great, and it, it's a great place, especially when you want to ask more detailed questions, that type of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But you guys also have some pretty good uh, resources too for that type of stuff, right? You know, we do. I'm, I'll be talking about them in just a moment here. Oh, okay. Was, <laughs> that was your lead-in. I was like, hey. Hey, hey, <laughs> we're all we're all plugging things here. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, this, this has been great, Mike. Thank you for joining me today. This was this was so much fun and some really, really great insights for people who are are uh, ready to take the plunge, I think. Very good. Chris, okay. always good to see you guys. My pleasure. So as always, thank you to everyone who is listening to and supporting the show. New episodes of the Cyberwork podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central, both on video, on our YouTube page, and on audio, wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. And I want to make sure you all know that we have a lot more than weekly interviews and cybersecurity careers to offer you. You can actually learn cybersecurity for free on our InfoSec Skills platform. If you go to infosecskills.com slash free and create an account, you can start learning right now. We have 10 free cybersecurity foundation courses from podcast guests, Keith Tron Evans, six cybersecurity leadership courses from Cicero Chimbanda, 11 courses on digital forensics, 11 courses on incident response, seven courses on security architecture, plus courses in DevSecOps, Python for cybersecurity, JavaScript security, ICS and SCADA security fundamentals, and more. Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free and get some learning today. Thank you once again to Mike Myers and Total Seminars, and thank you all again for watching and listening. We'll speak to you next week. Bye. Bye.